A number of people have asked me to do a review of the uh, Zelos Nova, a new 38mm dress watch that has just come out from Zelos. And uh, this is really my only opportunity to do so and cover absolutely all of the colours apart from one uh, because we have all of the colours here at the Microbrand store. Um, and it's my only opportunity to do so today because it's the weekend. We put listings out, oh, I think about 7.30 in the morning, I think on Friday or, or the other day. And we'd already sold out of one of the colours by about 9.30 or 10 or 10.30. Uh, I'm trying to remember, you know, anyway, within a few hours, pretty much. So these are going pretty fast. I know that they, some of the colours uh, have sold out on Zelos site and elsewhere. Uh, so it seems to be a huge demand uh, for these watches, perhaps stronger than some of the other Zelos watches. And of course, like many other offerings from Zelos, the limited edition size is typically 100 uh, for each colour. And the more expensive colours, I think, are 60. It could be 50, but I do believe that's 60 or so. Uh, anyhow, so I have this only opportunity today to show you these colours before we ship these out. And this is why I'm wearing gloves today. I uh, don't want to be pretentious, but I know that uh, some of these watches I'm going to be handling uh, are going to customers. So I don't want to be hand-holding them, uh, you know, because we have to... Well, we always try and clean them up before we ship them out, but... Uh, the fewer fingerprints, the easier it is to, to manage these. And these are having to be packaged this weekend and go out. So, um, yeah, so I guess that's my excuse for a rough and ready review. Uh, jumping in off the deep end, we're going to look at every single colour apart from one. And the only one we're not stocking is the Meteorite. Nothing wrong with the Meteorite. It's just every dealer only is given a limited quantity of watches and we wanted to go for more of another colour that we knew would be more popular than the Meteorite. And the thing about these watches, each dial is completely different. So case is the same, movements the same, straps are the same. What's different is the dial and it's not just a different colour on each dial, but each one has a different pattern, a different texture, uh, you know, a different colour with still the same uh, major indices, uh, outer track, that kind of a thing. So it's a really fascinating offering from Zelos and um, I have a couple of misconceptions that people have promulgated that I'd also like to correct as well while I'm doing this. So let's just do a quick coverage of what we have and then we'll do a close-up of each one. So I have a movable mat here that I can slide across so you can see. This is indoor lighting, and the one on the left here is the Zelos Aventurine. And let me cover one misconception right now. So um, I've actually seen this, uh, another dealer that sells these in Singapore has actually said um, these are, they talk about Aventurine is a rock, implying that this is uh, a uh, kind of a rock face dial. Uh, no, it's not. So there's, when somebody says an Aventurine dial, they almost typically mean Aventurine glass. Uh, Zelos themselves list this as Aventurine glass, and it's a glass, I think the design originated in uh, Venice, possibly, if I remember right, I have to go check. Um, but pretty much this is a glass dial. Um, it's a gorgeously done glass dial. As you can see, it has uh, kind of catches the light at different angles. Uh, it very much reminds people of um, like the night sky with stars, that kind of a thing. So as a result, it's a watch that, uh, you, or sorry, a dial that you typically have in things like moon phases, that kind of a thing. So it's a really gorgeous looking dial. Um, there's more than one color. I, in fact, I'm going to just I'll come back to that. I'll, I'll interrupt this with a macro shot overlaid so you can actually see a close-up of the dial colors. But uh, if I bring this up close, it might pick it up uh, without doing the macro shot. Um, but you can see there's a lot of different colors in there. So you have a kind of a white, a, a purplish mauve color, and a blue. So there's some fragmented materials in there that are very small, uh, that are reflective in the glass. I don't know whether that's other glass in there um, or whether those are metallic. I'm not quite sure how Aventurine glass is made but it's absolutely gorgeous and usually a slightly more expensive option. Um, so this is actually uh, along with the Meteorite a slightly more expensive model than the others. Let's, let's talk about the price before I even slide along and I know you might want to be looking at a different color because there's five or six colors to, to pick from, but we'll, we'll get to those really quickly. So I'll just cover the price as I mentioned it here. The retail price on the Aventurine is $949. Let's call it 950. 
and the retail price on the others are 899 so you can call that 900 dollars um, right now we're having the same pricing as another store so we could always try and uh, price match make sure we have the lowest prices always so we're listing this at 924 this is the last one left um, we've already sold this um, and then the other watches we're selling at 849 so we're offering typically a $50 savings and on the Aventurine as it's the last one a $25 savings and that's not to push the micro brand store um, but I think I'm giving you what I call the street prices out there um, you know obviously Zelos are selling at full retail they had a pre-order price uh, they ship late to dealers so dealers are not uh, able to run pre-orders and I think that's why one or two dealers are doing cheaper pricing and we tend to go along with that as well so I think the pricing's fair we'll talk about the parts and components what you're getting in a minute but let's move on to the other colors so that is the Aventurine which is an Aventurine glass not Aventurine rock as uh, claimed by at least one other dealer and it's an easy mistake to make but Aventurine rock it would be kind of a cloudier blue if it was blue it wouldn't look at all like this uh, with a beautiful reflective um, colors inside the next one along here is called the espresso brown um, and it's also I'm going to try and get, get it to focus on this just give me a second uh, here we go so this is an interesting dial it's a combination of a sunburst dial you can see a sunburst effect and it's also a fume dial if you pay careful attention to it which means it's darker brown on the outside and lighter brown on the inside so it has radiating rays from the center of the dial. These are actually three-dimensional. Um, see if we can get focus on that for you. Uh, and I'll bring up a macro shot as well of this one so you can see. Uh, so it's kind of similar to a Seiko cocktail time if you've seen those radiating dials, uh, which is a very popular model. Um, and it's a really gorgeous uh, dial to look at. Um, catches the light in different ways. If this is an indoor lighting, it's actually got an overhead light, but it can look pretty dark at times. I'll put up some outdoor photos as well for all of these. Uh, so some of the photos I'll be showing may be outdoors. Uh, we took those uh, yesterday or the day before, or uh, pretty much just immediately before putting up the listings. So um, it was not during the heat of the day, but just, you know, either dawn or dusk. I can't remember which now. Um, so this is, um, you know, a gorgeous dial because it just catches the light in many different ways. And I really like the sunburst effect. Um, th these two are actually probably two of my favorites. Uh, so I put them next to each other because I'm going kind of dark to light here. But I, I do think that is a definitely one of my personal choices, but everyone's going to have a different taste. So this is really very subjective. The next one along here, and I'm going to come back to this one, so I'm not going to zoom in on it right now, is uh, the teal dial. And I will compare this uh, for somebody who asked with the Zelos Horizons version 2, G GMT version 2 teal, which is an identical colored teal dial, but the patterning is very different and the effect is very different. And it's a really similar size of the dial itself. This is a 38 millimeter watch. And the Zealous Horizons is a 40 millimeter watch, but it has an outer bezel because it's uh, a dive bezel with a 24 hour adjustable uh, uh, rotating ring on it. So it's um, going to have the inner dial up here, up to be approximately the same size. So it's a really good comp. Uh, so we'll come back to that one. I'm not going to kind of zoom in on that one right now. The next one along uh, is a salmon copper colored dial. Um, and it's really interesting for those of you who love Gillochet. So Gillochet is kind of a Victorian technology where you kind of roll, have some rolling presses that uh, impress some patterns on the dial. And this is not printed. This is actually a, a properly impressed Gillochet dial. Uh, and it's really nicely done. As you can probably see here, the patterning is exquisite. And of course, you have the radiating concentric circles around the subdial as well, which is very balance because that's centered uh, at six o'clock uh, and that actually goes really well with a Gillochet. All of the subdials have these radiating snailing patterns apart from the Aventurine which cleverly stays with the uh, uh, with the um, Aventurine solid color theme because uh, that would otherwise kind of break up the night sky look of it and, but all the other ones have these sunken dials with uh, a really gorgeous snailing pattern 
Uh, so yeah, I really like that. This is a really gorgeous dial as well. Not my personal taste because I'm not too keen on this color myself, kind of a peach color. Um, but it, it's actually uh, one that sold out first of all on Zealous's site and sold out first of all on ours. So this one has already been sold, hence wearing these gloves. I'm not trying to be pretentious in any way. And then the last color that we have here is uh, the Linen Silver. Now this one is also pretty interesting dial. Some people, especially people into retro watches, have really gone wow over this. Um, so it's got a combination of factors. The actual underlying color of the main dial is actually kind of a silver color, uh, kind of very similar to stainless steel, a little bit darker than stainless steel. Um, and uh, you've got this obviously a silver colored subdial with a concentric snailing on it as well. Uh, so it is a silver color, but it has this uh, patterning on it. Uh, it might look like scratches, or it might look like it's printed. It's extremely fine, so it's very hard to tell. It's a crosshatch patterning that kind of gives it almost a different light, a golden effect or um, even a slightly creamy effect and, and it uh, gives you the impression of linen writing paper, very fine writing paper or a piece of very fine linen material and uh, so this effect goes extremely well with the gilded hands and gilded uh, applied indices. The outer track is not gilded, that's a kind of charcoal colour and I do think um, it is going to draw the eye a lot for people who are into kind of more retro style watches um, that, uh, you know, a little bit more traditional. And I think that's better than just a plain white or a plain cream dial. So they've done a great job on that as well. I really think uh, Zelos have knocked this one out of the ballpark. Um, and I'm going to dwell on that a little bit longer when I'm now going to compare the, just to get these two out of the way, I'm going to compare the uh, teal with the Horizons teal that I mentioned. And also one other teal watch just to give you a feel for this teal colour because normally watches that are blue aren't typically teal. Um, so we have two watches here and the one on the left is the new uh, Zelos Nova and the one on the right, uh, actually sold that this weekend, it's our last one, another reason to wear gloves, uh, is the uh, Zelos Horizons version 2 in teal. So they both have a sunburst effect. The sunburst effect is very subtle on the Nova uh, because it's concentrating more on the pattern, on the dial. So there's less patterning on the um, horizons. Uh, so it's more of a deep sunburst. Uh, looks like you've got some light playing on the water, looking into the depths. Whereas the one on the left really, it almost seems fluid in motion. It's got kind of a turbine twist, twisted lines. Uh, with look like almost bubbles in them. So you could imagine swirling water here, very active. Uh, could be fish, could be, you know, uh, uh, bubbles in the water. It just really gives you a much more interesting dial effect. And I think they've taken this to the next level uh, in terms of uh, that's the next uh, design of the teal. Uh, and this was the one, the earlier one from earlier this year, uh, which is again a version 2. So I think, you know, you can see Zelos are upping their game in their dial designs. I actually like this uh, totally different effect. It's a little bit cleaner and easier to read, which is more important in a dive watch. And also you've got the GMT functionality as well. Um, so there may be other reasons for doing that. But this design we've got here is absolutely gorgeous. So that is an interesting comparison, Zelos to Zelos, and you can probably see the size, as I mentioned, is pretty, I'm trying to keep them at the same height here, it's pretty similar with the dials, it's just, uh, the 40 millimeter is a bit bigger, but it does have the outer uh, rotating bezel. Uh, so um, yeah, it's an interesting comp for sure. So one other teal just to show you, um, I don't really have good comps for the others, I, I don't have a cocktail time that's similar. I tend to keep micro brand watches myself. So this is another watch that's another teal color. I'm just going to focus on that for you and push this one out of the way. Uh, there we go. So this is a Decima Scylla. Uh, I think I've got like two or three, three of these left. And it's a dive watch, 44 millimeters, a lot bigger. But you can see a typical sunburst, not too dissimilar to the uh, Zelos Horizon. So that's your typical teal color that you may get in other watches. So I would definitely call this a teal. Um, 
the other reason for showing this particular watch is I want to do a comp with the height uh, of this watch. I don't know how well this is going to come out on the camera here. Um, you know, it it's just super thin. That's one of the features I really like about the Horizon. So let's talk about the aesthetics and everything else. So the finish on the Horizons is, let's just focus on the edge of the case here. You do have a polished line, a single line around the bezel that's polished. And that's a really gorgeous accent uh, that makes the dial pop a little bit more. The rest of the case finished is a brush finished vertical lines on the side. But the case is pretty interesting in itself anyway, because you also have um, kind of uh, very angular straight lines on the side here. So it's kind of keeping a modern feel case and the case is minimal. Uh, it's really, I mean, it's all about the dials here. You really don't want to have an interesting dial. It takes away from, for, uh, sorry, an interesting case. It takes away from the dial. So this one here, it's uh, definitely an interesting dial with Fume effect and so on, but the case is pretty much a case that, um, you know, 10-sided case, 12-sided bezel, high dome. It's part of the story because this is a bronze. So this is doing something different. Whereas this one here, they're minimizing what they want to do with the case. They're pretty much saying, uh, you really want to be looking at the watch here. And it's the dials that pop. The colors on these are pretty strong. Uh, they're all gorgeous. They're all eye att uh, attention grabbing uh, colors. And this is definitely a kind of a watch that you really want to be looking at the dial. And even the choice of these straps, these are Hallween leather straps. So they are very nice quality. Hallween's pretty expensive. It's a it's the oldest operating U.S. tannery and usually the most desirable choice, uh, at least as far as tanneries go, uh, for a lot of people. I mean, um, Halloween straps, I, I've, I've picked some up for myself for personal use, can buy those for $100 or so. Obviously, wholesale, it's probably going to be a lot cheaper. But still, these are very good value vintage style straps. So again, talking about the aesthetic on these, uh, I'll switch to a different dial so you can enjoy it more. Um, you know, the straps are gorgeous. Uh, they they work very well with the watch because they're understated single color black or whatever. But they are vintage style straps, so they kind of don't make this a dressy dress watch. It's more of a casual dress watch, which is interesting because this is a somewhat expensive timepiece driven by the price of the movement and the other parts. So... Um, uh, I don't think it's overly expensive. I'll talk about the movement in a minute and the dimensions. But the, um, you know, given the price point that this is at, I would have liked to have seen a dressier pair of straps uh, with this watch. Um, maybe some real uh, uh, shiny croc or shiny alligator straps or some very good quality uh, vintage style, not necessarily, but a very good quality um, more of a traditional dress straps like this one would do really well with some brown uh, Italian leather straps that are, are really good quality. So uh, nothing wrong with these straps. These work super well. But I do want to mention that I, I don't find that a negative. But I do think if I was buying one of these watches, I would probably also be looking at an aftermarket strap. So that's kind of a, a takeaway. I always try and say things that are positive, as, you know, just try and give you a balanced review as well. Uh, so that's an important point to keep in mind. You probably will want to go for an extra pair of straps. These do come with a bracelet, and I have uh, one of the bracelets here, so let's take a look at this. And these are very nice seven-link bracelets. Each of these small links here, the uh, it's kind of six small links set into the bigger one, are uh, individual links. It does have screwed pins, so it's not push pins. Uh, double button release on the uh, butterfly clasp. No half links, which is a pity. Uh, the end of these are solid end links, as you can see. And the accenting on this is interesting too. Let's just get the focus on that if I can. There we go. So the focus on the accent uh, on the side of the... Um, I'll re-say that, sorry. The um, side of the... Uh, um, links basically has a polished beveled edge very very thin polish just a touch of polish as you can imagine the single touch of polish on the side of the uh, case of uh, you know around the bezel on the watch is also polished 
and the rest of these are uh, brushed finished. So it goes pretty well with a watch. It's thin, which is good because this is a super thin dress watch. The thickness of this watch and uh, is really, really thin. This is a seven millimeter thick watch, guys, in terms of this height of the um, case itself. With the uh, boxed crystal on top of it, it's supposed to be 8.5, though I think some people are clocking that at 8.6, 8.7. But we'll say less than 9. Uh, let's be generous, say 8 three quarters with the bezel uh, and 7 without. Very thin as a dress watch. It's also very light. So it's as thin and light as a quartz. You'd forgive people for thinking that's a quartz. And that's pretty much down to the choice of movement here, which is a super thin movement and a gorgeous hand-wound movement. So you also don't need space for the rotor. Um, in fact, let's take a look at the back of the watch while we're doing that. This one, I've got the uh, back protective cover off so you can get an idea. It is a really nicely decorated movement. Um, it's an ETA 7001, as you can see. And that started life as a Peso 7001, and ETA recently, I believe, acquired the brand. You can see, by the way, these are quick-release pins on the Holwyn straps, Zelos branded. And let me just turn it around the other way. And um, with the uh, Halloween uh, leather USA, so since 1905. Um, so these are really uh, nice looking exhibition case backs. Um, you do have some decoration. You uh, I'll probably mispronounce it, Cote de Genève, the kind of striping on the uh, plates on the back. The screws are blued. I don't know whether that's heat treated blued or whether that's uh, kind of a just a coloring on the screws but it certainly adds to the overall look of of the back so uh, maybe not the most decorated back but a very nice decorated watch back and the most important thing about this movement uh, is that it is actually a top grade movement so that actually surprised me uh, i would have expected a standard grade or an allegory grade so there's four grades of swiss movements typically you get a standard grade then you get an elaborate grade or elaborated grade in English, which is basically uh, typically a little bit more decorated. Maybe it has an extra adjustment position so you can better regulate it or a uh, slightly better shock uh, system on it for uh, dealing with uh, shocks for movement. And then you have top grade, which has upgraded a lot of things uh, in, in the same vein. And then the final grade, which is usually super expensive, you have to pay is cost grade, which is you pay for cost certification at a laboratory in Switzerland. Uh, and that is extremely uh, expensive uh, option usually. Uh, so you don't normally see those in micro brand watches unless they're high end, very expensive timepieces at a much higher price point than these. So to have top grade kind of uh, second to best is actually uh, part of the reason for the pricing that we're seeing here. Uh, Hallwing straps expensive. A seven link bracelet with solid end link screw pins is also uh, not a cheap option. So they've not cut corners on this and that is partly why you're seeing the pricing. I also think it's Zelos are great at how they do their marketing. They always do a very small limited edition. They always sell out collectors just have to snap the color they want quickly and it's been a feeding frenzy to be honest uh, and uh, no you know no wonder this is a you know, really nice design um, but with the limited quantity that helps keep the prices where it's at. Zelos are one of the most popular micro brands out there uh, famous for their dye watches. This watch by the way in keeping with the Zelos traditions of uh, dive watches is 100 meters water rated, which is really nice. It is not a screw down crown. It is, which is, you wouldn't want a screw down crown typically if you have a hand wound watch, but it is nevertheless a um, 100 meters rated. Probably it has a uh, couple of seals inside there that help with that. So that's nice to know. The top is, looks like it's a domed, uh, not, kind of acrylic because it's high dome on the or high box I should say not dome sorry uh, but it's actually a sapphire glass I've tested that with an anti-reflective coating and on the exhibition case back as well uh, that is also sapphire glass so they didn't stint they could have done a mineral glass on the back and everyone would have been happy with that too so really nicely done guys I'm just super happy with these 
Uh, I actually would have taken one of the Aventurine, the last one myself, if I didn't have an Aventurine watch coming in soon that I'd recently ordered. So that would have gone in my personal collection. They do wear pretty nicely. Um, I have a 7-inch wrist, and I'm not going to wrap these on my wrist because these are going out, unfortunately. Uh, but I've kind of held it against my wrist, uh, and, um, and uh, you know, it actually fits pretty well. I think these would work well up to about seven and a half inches, but maybe not beyond that. So if you have a seven and a half inch wrist or less, uh, less you know, um, then this could be a watch to go for, for a gentleman. Uh, work well with ladies too, who don't mind larger um, sizes. 38 millimeter is a good crossover size. This salmon color... I know has appealed to a number of people, um, but uh, gosh, you know, talking about colors, I don't. I think people can wear anything they want, and colors don't. You know, this people say, "Oh, that's kind of pinkish. That's a ladies' color." Well, it's more of a peach color. It's not pink, and it's. Uh, by the way, pink was originally historically a men's color, uh, so uh, you know, you really don't want preconceptions about color. But I do note that uh, when I sell ladies' watches. They typically want to get a quartz, they want something lighter and thinner. So we do have a lighter and thinner dress watch. And we do have some bright colours. That is one bright colour. And the teal uh, is particularly interesting. You know, so pastel colours do extremely well. So I see this as a crossover watch in terms of popularity. Uh, with, um, you know, there's a number of uh, ladies out there who collect watches. And I do think this is going to appeal to them as well. So overall, a very nice watch. I will cover one more piece of information for you, which will be the dimensions, that kind of a thing. So I mentioned the height, 7mm, super thin. Um, let's just move some of these out of the way so we can look at one or two other features on them. Uh, so the height is 7mm, um, very nice angular sides, makes it nice and sharp to accent how thin this is. Um, the diameter for the straps, the lug width is 20 millimeters, so that's a very standard uh, size, which means you'll be able to easily find any number of aftermarket straps you want. The lug to lug length is 44 millimeters. That is a little bit longer than some other 38 millimeter watches, but it's you know in the right ballpark for a 38 slash 39 uh, kind of a watch, so it's what you would expect. But the dial does look large even on a smaller wrist because you have very little bezel uh, rather than a thick bezel. So it's uh, pretty nicely done. And then, uh, let's see, the diameter is supposed to be 38 millimeters. I actually measured that at 37.9, just going from here to here. So definitely it's a 38 millimeter watch. So all in all, a pretty nice timepiece. Um, so let's talk about negatives. I did mention... Uh, the straps, it's not truly a negative with these straps. These are very nice straps. Let's look at the end of the straps with uh, this kind of stitching. But if you're going to get a dress watch, I would typically get dress watch straps too. I think people are going to wear this on this and like it. It does have a signed uh, buckle, which is nice. To, well, you'd kind of expect that from Zelos. Um, but there is one thing I was thinking, you know, it's a dress watch. I actually would have liked to see a butterfly clasp on this. Uh, you can get butterfly clasps no matter how thick these straps are. Um, these are not particularly thick. They're, they're thin in keeping with the rest of the watch. It's probably, I haven't measured that, but it's probably, it feels like three millimeters just, just by handling it. Could be wrong there. So, uh, and anyway, you can get butterfly clasps made for any thickness of strap. I've actually have some for seven millimeter thick straps. Um, so you can get that. And I think that would make the straps last a little bit longer on a thick Halloween strap that's a dive watch strap, you don't want to get a butterfly clasp, right? And so Zelos are used to doing these normal uh, kind of buckle and tank style clasps. But in my opinion, uh, this is a dress watch. It really would have helped, uh, you know, keep the uh, leather to be uncreased, uh, which is what you want a nice look in a nice looking dress watch. So those are my only negatives. And when I'm digging to really pick those out that tells you how nice I think this watch is so super impressed if you have any questions do let me know I'm gonna switch over to some loom shots uh, right now that I took during the night last night 
Uh, just to give you okay we had a little bit of a snafu with the camera there the battery went flat so sorry for the interruption um i am going to um put up some loom shots that i did last night and the uh, just to give you an idea it's not really much of a much of a noticeable loom on the uh, nova because it's a dress watch and dress watches are not really about the loom but you can see the sub dial for the second hands is not loomed in any way but it's a fairly strong loom it's a bgw9 that glows blue uh, when it's charged in the dark and looks white during the day um, um, but it's nevertheless a really nice loom on it and then the uh, one on the left that i'm comparing it with is a little bit of an unfair comparison that's a dive watch and dive watches are all about the loom uh, to be high visibility so very thick loom probably x1 grade uh, and also it's a Zelos, it's the Zelos uh, Horizons GMT, just so you can compare. Uh, so obviously you're seeing less loom on the dress watch, which you'd expect, but it is nice that it's loomed, it's long-lasting loom, it's Swiss Super Luminova, uh, so you guys shouldn't have a problem with that. So that probably pretty much covers uh, everything I wanted to briefly cover in this review. Um, you know, my opinion is if I didn't have an Aventurine coming, I'll be taking the Aventurine. I do like, uh, probably my next choice of color would be this one here, the, um, because I, I never picked up one of these as a cocktail time. And the cocktail time is hard lex glass and it's a little bit larger. I think this is a little bit more stylish because it's got this 3D patterning on it. Uh, that's a little bit more noticeable. So that, that would have been my uh, number two choice as well. Uh, and I obviously like the teal. Uh, I like the linen, though um, probably I'm not so hot on retro looking watches. So yeah, I'm pretty much into all of them. The only one I probably would have passed on is this one, just because I'm not looking for a peach dial. Um, but these are sold already, so um, obviously other people are going to disagree with me on that. So gorgeous watches. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I'd love to address them if I can. Um, and that's it. Thank you for watching. Take care.